Think of drivers in the past in motorsports that transcend the sport and are also championship level talents. Imagine if you learned at some point that a foreign rebellion or revolutionary force had kidnapped them for ransom. As a NASCAR fan, my mind goes to Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt in the 90s and Gordon in the early 2000s. It'd be a massive worldwide news story. Now, go a step further, step higher, and think of if the same thing happened to Formula One superstar Lewis Hamilton. It'd be a news story of biblical proportions. And this is exactly what happened in the late 1950s to Formula One driver Juan Manuel Fangio in Cuba with Fidel Castro's rebellion. Before jumping straight in though, we need to have a little backstory to set up and understand these events. So let's start with the driver. Juan Manuel Fangio was really the first kind of GOAT status Formula One driver. In the 1950s, he established himself through his performance as he won five Formula One championships between the years of 1951 and 1957, including four in a row from 54 to 57. The mark of five total championship wins has only been beaten twice in F1's 64 year history since 1957, done by Michael Schumacher and Lewis Hamilton. The mark of four straight titles has either been tied or beaten by both of the aforementioned drivers as well as Sebastian Vettel. He did this with four teams as well, these being Alfa Romeo, Ferrari, Mercedes, and Maserati. He did this by getting 24 wins and 35 podium finishes in only 51 starts. For this, he earned the nicknames like El Maestro, aka the Master, as well as the Godfather of Formula One. Suffice to say, he's a big deal in 1950s auto racing. Now, in another world outside of racing, there was another major person at this time in history, Fidel Castro. Castro was a Cuban rebel and revolutionary, as well as a communist. In 1952, he led the Cuban revolution against President Falgencio Batista. This went on for years, where the two sides would fight against each other, both physically as well as in propaganda and PR-wise, both using dirty and downright evil tactics at times to fight the other. By 1958, the fight and political tensions had hit a fever pitch. Batista needed the help of a good publicity stunt as his power and influence with the Cuban government was slipping. So, to counter it, he would work to set up a Formula One race in Cuba. Though, it would be more of an exhibition race as it wouldn't count towards the F1 championship. The race would be set in Havana, which is also known as Las Vegas of the Caribbean. And with the event being such a high profile one, there were expected to be over 100,000 spectators at this race. Being an event like this meant that the drivers also could have a bit of off time when they were visiting the city. Well, coming back one night to their hotel, the Hotel Lincoln, Fangio was heading up with friends and was approached by a man in a leather coat. The coat-wearing man then whipped out a pistol and held the F1 star at gunpoint. And he told him, you must come with me. I am a member of the 26th of July revolutionary movement. One of Fangio's friends then tried to help him, and it really didn't help him at all in the situation. The gunman actually threatened to kill Fangio on the spot if he or any of his friends in the party tried to do anything to stop what was happening. So with that, Fangio reluctantly agreed to go with the man and was escorted out to a car outside of the hotel. This was meant to be a huge worldwide statement. In kidnapping the world's most famous race car driver, it would legitimize their revolution to the world's superpowers, who at this time had largely ignored them. The funny part of all of this is how Fangio kept his cool in it all. They were planning on taking his friend and fellow driver Sterling Moss as well until Fangio had said that they couldn't take him because, well, he was on his honeymoon. It was a bald-faced lie. And to his credit, Fangio actually didn't view it as a bad experience. He actually just kind of viewed it as another one. Also, he sympathized with their cause. Meanwhile, Cuban President Batista would keep the race going even though there was no news on Fangio's condition at the time that it started. In Fangio's place would be French driver Maurice Trintignant. 
Fangio, in return, was offered a personal apology from Castro's top man in Havana for having to miss the race. But Fangio really didn't mind, as the race was a disaster in pretty much every way. The aforementioned Moss took the lead early, but oil was covering the track. Many actually thought that it was a ploy or a plot by Castro to send another statement to the Cuban government. Instead, it was actually just oil from a car that had a broken oil line. A lap later, though, a driver, Armando Garcia Fuentes, crashed into spectators because of this. This injured 30 and killed 7 more. Moss would end up getting the victory, but the race was the least of anyone's concerns that day. Fangio would be dropped off at his home embassy of Argentina at the race's conclusion. The job was done. Castro's goal of making the president look like an incompetent fool was completed. On top of that, the world's backlash against Batista's PR nightmare helped legitimize Castro in only 26 hours. Many began to support his cause, and even the man himself due to this incident. By the next year, Castro had won and would be put into power as a new Cuban president. The next F1 race in Cuba after this would be in 1960, this time under communist control. Being held at Camp Columbia Military Airfield, this would be the last race held in the country, as in the 60s, racing was banned in Cuba for being a Western capitalist sport by the one-party state communist government. Castro would go on to be president, prime minister, and ruler of Cuba through 2008. As for Fangio, he retired five months after the kidnapping. Of the experience, he said that, quote, the revolutionaries treated me well. They tried to explain to me their reasons for my kidnapping, the aims of their organization, and their attitude was even friendly. He actually befriended one of his kidnappers after the fact, too. And, in all honesty, Fangio may have dodged a bullet by missing the race. According to some accounts, he watched the race from one of his kidnappers' homes, where he would say, quote, Who knows? Maybe it turns out that I owe you people my life. No matter the fine details, it was, and still is, one hell of a story. Now, I want to pass this one on to you. What do you think of Fangio's kidnapping and the overall story? And what are some absolutely insane motorsports stories that you remember and know? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video. Share this video and subscribe to my channel for more fun racing stories and content. And thank you to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.